Leon! I got it! I have the sample. You serve me no purpose. Sadler! My boy Salazar will make sure you follow the same fate. Stay with me, Lois. I am a researcher hired by Sadler. He found out what I was up to. <laughs> Don't talk. Here. It should suppress growth of the parasite. The sample. Sadler took it. You have to get it back. Lewis! Lewis! Hello, welcome back to Resident Evil 4. Remember when I said that I wasn't going to do this anymore? Oh, that rhymed. Remember when I said I wasn't going to do this anymore? Well, guess what? I lied. You know why? Because I'm a liar. Anyway, on the last episode, we, we did the same thing that we have done the entire game, which is shoot people and kill them. Um, and in this episode, we're going to... Actually, we're going to do something a little bit different. But it still involves killing people. Actually, no, we're going to do the same thing, but then later we're going to do something that that isn't that. If you understand what I'm saying. So, Lewis is dead. That sucks. But he managed to give us a... Not a cure for the parasite. Shut up. Not a cure for the parasite, but he gave us a... Something that will be able to suppress it for the time being. <sighs> I'm tired. And we finally found Ashley. Great. That makes me so happy that we found Ashley. Good. But in order to progress the game, we actually do have to save her. You can do this with any gun, but I like to use the sniper rifle since it's the most accurate. You have to shoot off her metal strap things and if you accidentally end up hitting her then she will die and as great as that sounds we can't allow that to happen and yes yeah, she makes that noise every time and if you also just hit her in the arm a little bit she will also die so now that she's being bombarded by these men in black hoods, <laughs> men in black, but again, we just have to, it's kind of like the, uh, that room from way back when she was grinding those gears and people were trying to take her away. You know, like in any other situation where guards are trying to take her away, just shoot them. I like to use, I don't particularly like to use the, uh, sniper rifle in this scenario because it, I'm, I, it, it, I might end up hitting Ashley, which will kill her again, and using a different gun. The sniper rifle is a little too zoomed in, so I can't really see the area all that well, so I like to use a gun that allows me to see people uh, who's coming after more easily. For, for whatever reason, her AI kind of acts weird, and she just kind of jauntily saunders around the room. And that door is locked, and that man has the chest 
No, not. He has a chest, but there's a key on it, on this chest. So, once you kill him and all these other people, Ashley will be... And there, see? You gotta pay attention. I don't know why she went back over there again. She always recenters herself in that room. And yes, you can get hurt in this part too, because there are crosswomen who can shoot at you. Although, tip, sometimes they will miss. Like that, like that idiot right there. And... Yes, you do. She has the key. And now, this leads in to everybody's favorite segment in this game. The part where you play as Ashley. I'm dead fucking serious. Yeah, there's a part... You know, in every Resident Evil game, there's always been a part where you play as a different character for just a little bit. Well, in most Resident Evil games. Like, the old ones, like, from 1 to 3, and Code Veronica, there are segments where you play as a supporting character. Like, in Re well, you don't do it in 1, but in 2 to Code Veronica, you do. In Resident Evil 2, there's a segment in Leon's campaign where you play as Ada, and then in 3, you play as Carlo. So, there, this is in keeping with tradition of, um, the series. Now, Ashley controls pretty much exactly the same as Leon, with the exception of... of she has absolutely no weapons whatsoever, and she has no melee attacks, so she pretty much has almost no means of defending herself. And this this may at first seem like a stealth segment, but there's really absolutely no way you can avoid these guys. They're going to find you regardless. So there's, there's really... I don't know why I was attempting to sneak around this guy. There's really no way you can do it. See, they, they find you anyway. <sighs> I keep yawning, dude. Shit. So there are these gate there are these barred gates that keep you from Oh also forgot to mention. When I said there's almost no way to defend yourself, there is one way. These lanterns are scattered about, and if you hit a guy with them they will light on fire. Um and I don't think one hit kills them instantly, but I think about two hits of the lantern will kill them and you can miss it it does auto aim you a little bit but you can miss also this asshole and they can't interrupt you while you're doing that which is very irritating but it's never too huge of a problem see and yeah about two hits will kill them I think. No. Uh, that might be because I missed. Also, a great clip, great uh, hit detection right there, video game. Um, I keep saying um a lot. But yeah, that's pretty much... There. This, this segment is pretty much cut in two halves. There's this half where you've got to deal with these cult guys. And then there's another part coming up later. And that was luck. I managed to get lucky and hit both of those guys at the same time. And if you can hit them while they're down, then, uh... I don't know if fire actually does damage to guys while they're on the floor, which is kind of really stupid, but this game is old, so, you know, what can you expect? Although, that is, that's, a, that's a pretty dumb oversight. Fire should hurt you. I mean, I don't care how old the game is, and this game really isn't that old. Fire should hurt you regardless. It's fire. That's what it does. This doesn't look provocative at all. And yeah, there are two gates in this part. So, just just to annoy you, but if you've already killed all the enemies, then it's just a time waste at this point. Although they do keep you from running away, so which would make this segment really easy if you could just run straight past the enemies. And there are, great clipping by again by the way, there are treasures and, and loot that you can pick up in this segment. And when you complete this segment you will give them back to Leon. So that's, uh-huh. And there's that again. Yep, uh-huh. <laughs> um, but y you'll give them back to Leon at the end. I'm gonna put in an um counter. No, I'm not a <coughs> so I won't do that. All I'm gonna cut out that word. <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, there's not much to say about this part other than other than all that. Now we're gonna come up to a fork in the road. As you can see, there's a door over there. That red indicator means that it's locked. So even if I went into that room, I would uh, be unable to proceed. So you have to go to the right here, and you can either use that those that herb capsule or on Ashley and it will heal her and increase her overall health but uh you can or you can save it and just give it to Leon and here is a note from Salazar's butler if you want to read that you can pause it because I'm not reading it because fuck you so right here there's a door and obviously in Resident Evil fashion the key is on the other side of this area so we have to go all the way over there so if so they they make you play as Ashley not too long but enough to make you hate it yes there is a draft coming from there so it would seem going by Indiana Jones logic that that is the way out some weird art sprung around like I'm trying I can't even really tell what what these paintings are but here's some treasures that we'll give to Leon later always important get the treasures so yes we're going to go to the other side of this hall and that will enact the second segment and I gotta remember I gotta Past me needs to learn to stop wasting so much time. I w I'd like to be thorough, though. And then, now, Ashley, if you'll notice, she has magically pulled a flashlight out of her ass. And we have now entered the Luigi's Mansion segment of the game, where orange ghosts are going to pop up, and we've got to make their hearts appear. No, that, 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 would, that would be great if that did happen, but that's not what's going to happen. Push this switch and this is the most puzzly thing about this segment there are different switches in the room there's that again and they open up different different gates um, it doesn't go in a completely linear fashion so you've got to figure out which and yeah they also close the gates too so they block you off from areas you've got to find out which gates open up the right ones and we're gonna need that stone tablet for later for something that is horribly, 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 horribly annoying. But you'll see that in a second. So yes, we've gotta switch, hit, <coughs> we gotta, <laughs> We gotta hit these switches in a specific order to get through to the door. So we got through the door. Now, beyond this door, you could maybe say, well, this isn't a loading door. This is just the normal door that you push. This is the type of door that enemies can go through. This is, I really got, I wonder really what this room is for in the overall design of the castle. You know, because sometimes it just seems like, do these rooms really just exist to house keys or was there like a point to them? This almost kind of seems like a tomb of some sort. By the way, it's decorated and just the ugly bricks and just like no one has been down here in a while. That's what it seems to me. But down here, there's a locked door, and there is also this little pedestal. And guess what we have to do? We have to do one of those sliding block puzzles. Don't you love those? Aren't they great? No, <laughs> they're not. They're not great at all. They're really awful. And they take forever. The thing, this is probably one of the most 
if not the most infamous thing in this game, besides Ashley just in general, is this stupid block puzzle. You may have noticed that this is moving at a rate that is probably not the normal rate of speed that this was, would go. This is because I sped this up. The thing with this puzzle is that you can either be done with it really, really fast, because there is a certain pattern that you can do at the beginning to get it over and done with as quickly as possible. But I don't know that pattern. So every time I do this, I just have to take a guess and just try to get it right. Should I have looked up the pattern before doing this and recording it? Perhaps. Perhaps I should have. But the thing with me is I really enjoy wasting people's time. So, you're just going to have to sit here and watch. <laughs> no, not really. You can, you can skip ahead if you want to. But, yeah, I'm just... This is just going... Th this, even, even sped up, is just showing that you're given your first time through, or if you're just a lazy idiot like me and don't want to look up how to do this, or just want to do it on your own, because you're probably not going to remember how to do this, even after you've done it a few times, because I have done it a number of times. I still don't remember the precise way to go about doing it. Uh, it takes a long time. It takes a very long time. But you can see the the basic shape that you need to make that you need to that you need to make this. It I think is probably some kind of probably maybe it might be the the family crest of the Salazar family. Maybe that's it. I'm, I'm gonna assume that, that that would make sense, but it might just be some random shape that means absolutely nothing. But you, if you remember that stone tablet that we got in there, finally it's done. That stone tablet we got in the middle, earlier in the room, in the, in the in the last room, that's the last piece. So if you forget that, then you've got to run all the way back to the other end and get it to complete it. So please remember to pick that up. Very important. And as you can see, there is something back here. If you remember that key from a while back, that we need to get through that door, that uh, where that shield and sword and sh those swords and shield door was. This is not what we need to get through there, but that is a treasure, so we can sell that later. But the key that we need to get through that door to get out of here is in that knight's chest. But I'm going to just quickly gather up the rest of the loot before we collect that because we will never be coming back here again and I don't want to have left anything. I wonder if that's... Ah, I wonder if that has the family symbol on it. I don't know. We not only get that though, but we also get a piece of that big huge door that Salazar dropped in front of us way long ago. Also, the night suits have come alive. Uh-huh. That'll probably scare the crap out of you your first time through. Um, so yeah, just run. Um, you cannot hurt those night suits. And yes, if you remember from earlier when we had to fight those as Leon, but those, there are still those these quick time segments. I can't remember if these instant kill you or or not. But yeah, just press the button prompts. I've never waited long enough to see, but um, I, I don't know if those night suits can actually chase you through this door or not. Also, one last one to just fuck with you. I don't know if they can follow you out here, but they can't follow you out here. Because once you go through a load loading door, enemies can't progress any longer, so you've essentially escaped them. But doors that don't load... Typically enemies can follow you, but I don't know about those knights. But yeah, you can't do anything about them, so just run away from them. Now that we've inserted the family insignia, we can turn this little dial thing. And that will open up this door. And this ladder. And look at all these money shots. There's a, little, there's a few treasure chests right here. And once we go out of the door leading up here, we will be out of here. 
Also, I'm having a little bit of, apparently having a little, little bit of an epileptic fit because I keep stopping and starting again. Hallway is longer than, than you'd think, but at least they try to make the anatomy of this castle make sense. And yes, that door, that door had no special lock. It was just locked from the other side. Leon. Ashley. <laughs> you did good. I'm sorry if I was. Oh, don't worry about it. Come on, let's move on. And we got out of there, and we've met back up with Leon. So yeah, that was pretty much just the Ashley chapter. 3-4 is the Ashley chapter. Um, and I think, I think, I, I don't know if that's the end of chapter 3 or not, but before that, we did get a few items from Ashley. So there's that. So on the next episode of Resident Evil 4, we are going to continue our adventure and try to get the hell out of this castle and the hell out of wherever we are, which is, I'm pretty sure, is Spain and dick poop. <laughs>